and trouble will be over. And I have a brand new start. Oh, in the morning, when I rise, sweep the dust from my feet and wipe my eyes. <laughs> Come on with it now. Come on with it. stand on the home church. And I had an old preacher tell me one time before that when you talk long, you talk wrong. So go ahead and say what you got to say and get on out the way. But God is so good, worthy of all our praises, even in a time like this. I want to thank you all for being here. It's my beautiful family, my mother. You know, as I look around this crowd, mama, especially at the class of 2002, 
It's hard pressed to find somebody who ain't spent one night at our house. <laughs> I look around the crowd and some of everybody here done stayed at 3209 Dowdy Road. And I, I, I started to get a little selfish, mama, and started to say, well, maybe it's because me, Snooky, Joe, and Sneaky had so many friends. As I thought about it, I said, maybe it's because when they asked to go to Essie House, that their mamas and daddies knew that they were in good hands. So mama, I honor you. As I share her, y'all stand up and give my mama a hand. Give her a round of applause. You know, when Jesus looked down from the cross, he told John, What now? Come on. He said, This is your mother now. And it's hard for me to admit it, but everywhere I go, everybody, I love Miss Essie so much. And so I had to come to the realization that I share with my, my mama with a lot of people. But I'm okay with that because I realized that some people were not put here just for a few people. Some people were put here for everybody. Mama, you have a smile. You have an infectious spirit that was put here for everybody. So we gotta share you, but it's all right. It's all right. So hearing what I just said, y'all take care of my mama. When we can't beat our other rock, who I have to help out with a song every now and then, but it's all good. <laughs> Yo, George like one of them pitches that just throw the ball, he don't care where it go, he just throw it. <laughs> I'll be there to catch you every time. All right. I'll catch you every time. God is so good. To my baby sister, my singing partner, we were supposed to be the next BB and CC. I guess you would call us TT and Shishi or something like that. But God, he saw fit to call her home. And I don't question him one bit. Not right now, anyway. <laughs> but if I'm going to be honest, because I did. If I'm going to be brutally honest, I did. And not going to preach this morning. I didn't, you didn't see me come up here with Bible or anything like that. But I just want to talk. Just want to talk to you. In the midst of everything that we've gone through the last seven weeks, I found myself asking a lot of questions. I found myself being angry. And if I can admit it, on this church step, I was angry with God. And the crazy thing about it, because I'm not going, I'm not going to pretty this up just because I'm a preacher. I'm not going to make this sound any type of way because this is the way you think I'm supposed to sound. But the crazy thing about it is I, I angrily prayed one night. As I angrily prayed one night, telling God that I was angry with him, I heard a voice in my ear said, be mad at me because I'm God and I can handle it. You see, because if you hold that anger in, you're going to take it out on your family. You're going to take it out on your friends. You're going to take it out on everybody else that don't deserve it. But when I say cast your cares on me, I mean your anger, your frustration, cast it all on me. Because I'm God. And I can handle it. So many times we come before God with these pretty made up prayers. We know we hurt. We know we're going through, but because we've been taught to say this, taught to say that, we get down on our knees and we start lying. We start telling God what we think he wants to us to say. But the reason why the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart because David wasn't scared to tell God, God, I'm scared. God, I'm fearful. God, I'm even angry in this situation. And because he would come before God just as he was, God said that this is a man, a man after my own heart. We can't come before God expecting to be blessed, pretending to be somebody else. Because even though he's a God that blesses, he can't bless who you pretend to be. He can't bless tradition. He can't bless what you learn saying. But you gotta tell God just how you feel. And when I told, told God just how I felt, Mama, Gary, I told him just how I felt. He reminded me of some other things. He said, You spent the last seven weeks 
praying more than you ever prayed in your life. You spent the last seven weeks fasting more than you ever fasted in your life. You spent the last seven weeks studying my word and even trusting me more than you ever did in your life. And watch this, even though you didn't get what you prayed for, you can't be in his presence that long and not be changed. See, sometimes he causes us to go through certain things. Not to necessarily give us what we want, but to pull us into his presence. Have us spend a little bit more time with him. And even though we don't get what we want, you can't be in his presence that long. You can't be in his presence that long. And not be changed. John 10 and 10 says that if he comes, still kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundant. Now in my preaching, I love to tell my church that I love to use word association. I love to use word substitution. I take one word out and put another word in just to give them a better understanding of what we're talking about. I also tell my church all the time, and they'll tell you this, that don't just assume that in every passage of scripture you read that you're the good guy. You know, we love to say he'll make our enemy our footstool. But sometimes you're going to be somebody else's footstool. We love to point out David and all that he did, but have you ever thought about Goliath? I wonder if Goliath had a family. I wonder if he had children. I wonder if he was just doing his job. So don't always put yourself in the place of a good guy when you read these stories. You know that every now and then you're going to play the role. You're going to play the role of the bad guy. And every now and then you're going to be the footstool. But when you see scripture from that way, you associate words. I look at the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I, I took the word thief out. And I can tell you that over the last seven weeks, it wasn't necessarily a thief that was stealing, killing, and destroying my joy. It wasn't necessarily Satan that was doing that, but it was the word, it was the word if. Look at that verse again. The word if comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Many times we ask ourselves, if I had been there sooner, if I had just said this, if I had just said that, if I had been a better brother, if I had been a better sister, if I had been a better wife, maybe my husband wouldn't have walked off. If I had been a better husband, maybe my wife wouldn't have walked off. If we had been better parents, maybe our children wouldn't be acting the same way they're acting. The word if has been trying to steal, kill, and destroy my joy. And I'm about to leave y'all alone, but a few days ago, I got a visit. I got a visit from my sister. And as I'm talking to her in this dream, and I'm, I'm asking her, I'm saying, baby, if, I'm saying, baby, if, I'm saying, baby, if, and she looked at me, she said, Tay, shut up. She said, shut up because you know better. You know better and you're giving the word if too much power. You're giving the word if more power than the man you know who holds all the power. And he said, as a matter of fact, while you're giving the word if so much power, you need to understand that the word it is what you need to be thinking about. Because it was already ordained. Before he even placed her in mama's womb, he knew that this day was going to come. So there's nothing we could have done and nothing we could have said because it was already written in her book of life. And God had it already worked out. While we were trying to figure it out, he already worked it out. So I'm taking back my power from the word if. And I'm not worrying about if this mama, if that mama. But I'm simply letting all of us know that it, it will be all right. God has us. God has us in the palm of his hands. And he knew about this before we could even think about it. And sometimes it's hard to understand and realize at the time while we're going through. But like Gary said, when he got up here, We'll understand it better. We'll understand it better by and by. I said that if got some negative power. But if we're going to give the word if any power this morning, 
if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And I got any Bible readers in here. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek his faith. Turn. Turn from their wicked ways. Then he said, then he said he'll hear us. He'll hear us. He'll hear us from heaven. And he'll heal our land. But we got to be ready to turn. We got to be ready to seek his face. We got to be ready to turn. We got to be ready to seek his face. And if we do that, family, I promise you, I promise you that everything is going to be all right. Ask me how we going to make it all right, Mahogany. I didn't hear you. A man was given a shovel and told to move a mountain. And he asked him, how you going to move that mountain with that shovel? And he told him, one scoop at a time. So one day at a time, baby. One day at a time, Snoop. One day at a time, Crystal. One day at a time, Tony. One day at a time. Everything's going to be all right. Because if I start by loving you, you start by loving you. 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 We can't change the world. But we can start right here in Davis Station, South Carolina. We can start. So if you're going to honor my sister in any other way, you can honor her with your parties. You can, you can turn up and honor her. You can do all of that. But I can promise you she would rather have you honor her by giving your life to the Lord. By making a change making a change in your life. I told you I wouldn't be up here long and I know it's getting hot. But it's a little verse of a little song that I know mama loves and it's kind of a middle family, middle family song. And it goes, Tis the old ship of Zion
But what I need 